Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to this night-ending bonus upload. Before we jump into these very terrifying experiences, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to this night ending bonus upload, shall we? Today's first terrifying experience. My friend and I were deer hunting early bow season in west central Wisconsin. We had scouted earlier and we knew the area. We drove in and parked and then walked off the corner of a couple of fire trails, maybe two to three hundred yards. Total dark forest, but a lot of pine, so not much underbrush. Somewhat rolling terrain, easy walking. We didn't bring our flashlights. I got to my spot. My buddy went on to his chosen location maybe 100 to 125 yards further in. He would be roughly in my 10 o'clock position. It's maybe 4.30 in the morning. We wanted everything to settle down. Great location, several deer trails passing through to a swampy area across the road. It was a nice morning to be in the woods. My eyes became somewhat accustomed to the dark. I could vaguely make out the trunks of the pines surrounding me black compared to very dark gray. My shooting lane was pretty open from about my 11 to 1 o'clock, out about 50 yards. Sometime at around 5.45, I'd say, false dawn, my buddy decides to change positions. I see him pass left to right in front of me, out about 50 yards, barely visible. He is crouched over, not making a sound passes out of sight. I'm a little miffed. What was the point of coming in so earlier if we're going to wander around? Oh well, it's his area. I was a guest. Well, after it gets light and there had been no deer at all, I got up, stretched, pack up my stuff and head out. Same time, I see my buddy coming back from my left. I waited until he got up and asked, why did you move? And how did you get back to your original position? He looked quizzical. I never moved. I told him I saw you and gave him my story. He shook his head and said, no, it wasn't me. Not many theories will fit. Another hunter would make sense, but he sure didn't drive in and his license would have had to say Quasimodo. Was it a hunchback bear walking on its hind legs? Very doubtful. My hunting buddy is a Vietnam vet and used to talk about the rock apes that he had encountered once and that other soldiers spoke about. I asked him if he had ever seen Bigfoot. He didn't give me an answer. About a month later, he told me that a few years prior he was hunting there. Rumors of Bigfoot were being told by several hunters in the region. He never thought much of it, but was a bit surprised when I told him what I saw. Today's second experience. Sorry for my bad English, I am from Sweden. A few years ago, in the northern parts of Sweden, I went out for a nice evening fish. I am what I guess is called a fishing supervisor. I check that other fishermen have their licenses at certain areas on the lake and streams. This is in late summer, and I've been doing my rounds, which I usually end with going to a small lake and fly fish for some trout. 
This lake or pond is pretty deep in the forest, and I rarely meet anyone there. Actually, I've never met anyone there. This lake looks kind of like a crater, a perfectly round circle that's perhaps a hundred meters in diameter. It contains a natural population of perch and trout. It's a warm summer evening with a slight breeze, the birds are chirping, and the fish are raising to all the insects spawning on the surface. I rig my gear and aim for one of the fish raising out right in front of me. The second time, as my fly lands on the surface, it's like someone pauses the time. The sun hides behind a cloud, the wind stops blowing, the birds are suddenly silent, and the fish stops eating. A smell rises from the ground I'm standing on. It smells like something dead, something rotten, like I have a carcass buried beneath my feet. All of a sudden, I am aware there is something walking out of the forest behind me, maybe 10 to 15 meters behind. It's like I can see it out of the corner of my eye, but I still really didn't see it. Every hair on my body was on end. And it was suddenly very cold all around me. The thing watching me just stands there, and I don't have the courage to turn around at all. I see my fly sink to the bottom, but I cannot move. I can't do anything about it, because I do not dare move. Then the wind hits me, and it carries this awful smell away. The sun hits me again. A bird is singing somewhere in the forest, and the almost overtaking feeling of being watched lets go of me. I turn around and there's nothing there. On the lake, the fish start rising again. I pack my gear and throw my backpack on my back and run for it. Through the forest to get to my car, I hit the gas and drive like a maniac, until I got to a big road and civilization again. I park at the side of the road and say to myself, WTF was that? My heart still racing. I've not visited this lake since it happened, and as far as I know, no one else has either. What do you all think? I probably visited this place 20 times before this happened and never felt anything like it. The only thing is that I'm always afraid of bear when visiting it. I fish at a lot of ponds and lakes that are pretty deep in the forest. There's always a lot of wildlife in these places, deer, moose, fox, and occasionally wolf, bear, and bobcat. I'm never afraid of meeting one except when I've been visited this particular lake. Today's third terrifying experience. This experience happened to one of my best friends. It was told to me the next morning as he sat very upset and scared in his kitchen. This affected me deeply, as this friend is one of the most fearless and capable people I have ever met. Just to show you how calm and unexcitable he is, I will share one incident from his past. While sleeping in the back of his pickup one night in a very remote part of southeast Idaho, he told me that he was startled out of a deep sleep by an uneasy feeling of being watched. Upon opening his eyes, he was surprised to see a gray hairy man, like face, leaning over the side of his pickup bed, watching him sleep. He quickly sat up, startling the creature, which he watched bound away in the moonlight through the sagebrush and lava rock. When he told me this, I asked, what did you do? He answered, I went back to sleep. I was tired. As I said, not very excitable. So when I saw him that morning in his kitchen, scared and shaking, it affected me. Here is what happened. My friend and I had just moved to Portland, Oregon after college. One day he asks if he could borrow my 357 Magnum to take on a deer bow hunting trip. He was planning to go the next weekend near one of the national forests south of Portland, west central Oregon. He didn't think he'd need to use it, but was concerned about the large bear population where he'd be hunting, so I loaned it to him. He arrived at the hunting site deep in the woods at the end of an old logging road around twilight. Wanting to start hunting first thing the next morning, he rode his mountain bike in the dark to where he had hung his stand to spread the scent 
and make sure his shooting lanes were still open. As he was crouched down, dribbling dough in heat urine on the bush, he felt a presence. Of something behind him, he stood and turned, reaching for the only light he had brought with him, one of those little keyring LED lights that turn on when you squeeze it. He squeezed the light on and saw a large set of eyes, about three feet off the ground, reflecting back at him. The LED light was too weak to show anything else, just the reflection of the eyes. Thinking it was normal that a bear or a deer would mistake him for an animal, after all, he was crouched down and smelled like deer urine, he stood straight up, clapped his hands and said, Get out of here! in a firm voice, expecting that the confused animal would bolt away when he realized it was a human. His actions did not bring the expected result. Instead of turning and running away, the eye slowly rose over nine feet tall and took steps toward him. He felt an overwhelming sense of dread and quickly pulled the three fifty seven out of the holster, holding the revolver in one hand and squeezing the LED light in the other as he backed away from the eyes. Every step he took backwards, the eyes matched by advancing toward him, but always staying just out of the ring of light emitted by that little key light. In a short time, he was backed up against a large tree, which he used to protect his back while he watched the eyes observe him from ten feet away. The eyes would weave back and forth like a large animal adjusting his weight from side to side. They would rise and lower slightly like something was studying him from different angles. Even though he never could actually see this creature, he said, the sense of something huge. The way it moved, the sound of the leaves and dander under its feet as it walked, the impressive amounts of air that were inhaled and exhaled as it was breathing, and most of all the height of the eyes as they towered over him, all indicated the creature was massive. After an eternity, he lost sight of the eyes, but he could not hear. He could hear the animal circling his position. More than an hour had passed since the last noise or sighting of the eyes. Sitting with his back against that tree and a cock 357 in his hand, he decided to be safe to leave the area. It was now around one in the morning. He started walking to where he had left my bike. To his dismay, he heard an animal paralleling him in the thick brush. The creature followed him to the bike, not wanting to lose his sense of hearing his only warning of the animal's position. He chose to push the bike back to the truck instead of riding it. It took him over four hours to push the bike back to his camp. When he thought the animal was too close, judging by sounds it made in the underbrush, he would stop and wait. Every time he stopped, the animal would inevitably start to circle him again. When it sounded like it was... A bit further away in the circle, my friend would start pushing the bike again, only to repeat the same routine every ten minutes or so throughout the night. Finally, after a lifetime, he reached his vehicle, and in an adrenaline and panic-induced sprint through the bike in the back, started the truck and headed down the mountain. It took several miles before the heavy sense of dread stopped and started to recede. As the adrenaline wore off, his hands started to shake. He started shaking so bad that it was all he could do to keep the truck on the road until he pulled out up to his house and into his kitchen chair. That's where I found him a while later, when I went over to his house to feed and water his dog. After he told me what had happened to him, I offered to go back with him and retrieve his camping gear and tree stand. He refused the offer and left his possessions to nature rather than return to the area. It's at that point that he said that he was sure it was a Bigfoot, even though he hunts and fishes as avidly as any hunter does. He'll never go back to that little spot and avoids the entire region. Tonight's Final Encounter I do not wish to share a spooky experience or be analyzed by the learned people of science. My hope is to find those who have had a similar experience, especially in the region of the Sierra Nevada Mountains on the border of California and Nevada. 
Just to give a little background on myself, I'm a very successful technician in the world of broadcast. My eyes are my greatest tool for accuracy and detail. I am an accomplished visual artist and have studied the movement of animals closely since I was very young. I also had been coming to this same camping area for over 40 years, so scouting fish and other wildlife in the wilderness is second nature to me. That is to say, I have exceptional eyesight and I feel that I am a better witness to an event than most other people are because of my keen eyesight, but I also have the ability to keep calm under extraordinary situations. Having said that, in this instance, I have a fellow eyewitness, my wife of 13 years, that is the most skeptical of people that I know. So, all of you naysayers, save it, because I live with the biggest, and she would never have believed my experience if she was not on the passenger side beside me that night. I don't know how to categorize the creature I saw that night, but what I saw was very humanoid, and that was what was so disturbing. The location is Bridgeport, California, Twin Lakes Resort, a remote fishing lodge high in the Sierra Nevada mountain range. The resort sits in a valley about 7,000 feet and in the shadow of the mighty Sawtooth Ridge. A beautiful secluded spot with no cell phone service and tons of wildlife. I myself have seen bald golden eagle, osprey, mountain goat, mountain lion, mountain beaver, even a rare Sierra moose. The date would have been just after Labor Day 2014, maybe September 10th, approximately 5.30 in the morning. We had just finished loading the fishing gear and we were headed to the creek for some daybreak fishing. The creek campground is about a quarter of a mile from the lake cabin. I've taken this short trip literally a hundred times before and it's always active with nocturnal wildlife so we are always on high alert for the regulars like mule, deer, black bear, jackrabbit, and even rattlesnakes on occasion. This morning was a little foggy and still dark. The high mountain ridges keep the valley dark from dusk till dawn. I had just passed a smaller trail, trailer campground as we saw something cross the road coming in our direction, maybe less than 50 yards away. It looked very light and very close to the ground. It was the size of a large goat, but it moved very oddly. I thought goat because, quietly, I remembered that there were sheep herders on this side of the mountain but I hadn't seen them in maybe 30 years. I take pride in being the first to see and identify wildlife, but this time I needed a second to figure out exactly what I was seeing. So I asked my wife in the front passenger seat, what is that? Pointing at the thing running in our direction that the likes of which I know I had never seen. I was mostly confused because its limbs were not bending or moving in the right way that a deer, bear, rabbit, cat were supposed to move. So my mind did an evaluation and spit out the answer. It's an escaped sheep or goat that had been sheared and is running for its life so scared it didn't realize all its knees were broken and bent backwards and not running on its hooves slash feet at all. My wife could only say slowly because of disbelief. What the hell? Now, when my lights came across the creature, it was crossing the road, and we got the feeling we totally surprised it. And as I turned on my high beams, as I am always ready to do with large animals on the road, it seemed to get very irritated as it turned its long, human-like neck towards us and almost shook its head as it gave us a glare and started to double time along the road now in our direction. We were getting closer, but instead of being able to more positively ID this creature, I was only more confused, mostly because this thing's legs were not broken at all. Its torso no more than five inches from the ground, yet it was moving at a strange pace. I wondered first, with such long limbs, why is it so low? and not running on the bottom of its hooves or paws, how could it run so fast? The order of the feet landing was completely wrong as well, 
and if it was really trying to retreat quickly, it was not bounding or bouncing or swaying side to side. Its limbs moved in unison like a crab or spider, to be the most accurate, but without jumping to conclusion. I would describe it as one of ginger of Geiger alien creature. Jigger alien creature, excuse me. As fake looking as it might be, there was no movement in the torso, only the legs and arms propelled it quickly along. It appeared to me to be like a puppet, but moved by a marionette. Very bizarre. Maybe because I was so puzzled and troubled that I could not classify this creature. It just kept flipping out. When we got close enough to see the facial features, I should describe the features that I saw clearly and up close. As mentioned, a human-like torso, about four feet, no tail, human-like haunches. As we passed it, I saw it was not shaved at all. It was hairless and had pale skin. Its limbs were long, thin, very defined muscle and sinewy. Although it was crawling close to the ground, it had large, very human-slash-ape shoulders. I've only seen such shoulders on an upright walking animal. It seemed to be running on its feet, or claws, or knuckles. Imagine a sloth, but with long fingers or claws. The neck was thin and long, holding a forward-gazing predator, not a prey head. The skull had features close to a human-slash-ape than any canine, cat, rodent. The skull seemed to have a heavy protruding eye ridge, with a flat curve leading to the nasal cavity that you could see hardly. This I remember looking at, so I could at least classify which animal family it had come from. Goats. A goat's snout, or a cat's or canine nose, nothing, just two small openings high above by the eyes. Then, even stranger, the mouth. There was no long snout. This was tight-lipped human mouth with a large chin. It almost seemed to grin, but somehow I knew that it was not a friendly grin, almost evil, but how would an animal have an evil grin, right? If that wasn't enough to freak us out, then came the eyes. So at first sight, my headlight lit this weird thing up, and... As with all nocturnal animals, the first noticeable things are the reflection of its eyes in the car lights. Like all the rest of the many animals I had seen on this tiny stretch of road, their cover was blown instantly. Well, not this case. And all of the troubling things I had observed is this probably the most unexplainable. I was driving right into it, and I could see the eyebrow ridge. I saw deep eye sockets, but no shiny, large, or tiny eyes, just sockets. All would be revealed shortly, right? As I was sure to peer deep into whatever animal it was as we came 15 feet from it. Well, when the moment of truth came, me and my wife were horrified when all we saw were deep red eye sockets, like the thing had no eyes. Or there was a red membrane over them, something like a blind cave fish. Well, I just about drove off the road and tried to track the thing, but... Something told me I was better off just watching it run in the cloud of dust. The friggin' thing turned its head to look at us, was grinning all with these red eye sockets, and it just zips away, never breaking its creepy crawl. So that is my experience. I have never heard of or saw this thing again. I have no idea what it could have been. Nothing adds up. I really feel I was not supposed to see this thing. People like to say maybe it was an experiment gone wrong, or a mutated, deformed animal. But what I have to say to that is this thing was not sick or dying. It was strong, aware, fast, and would kick the ass of whatever wanted to mess with it. So, if this were a real cryptid, someone else must have seen it. Hell, it was by campsites. 
What would it be doing so close to humans if it depended on seclusion for survival? This doesn't add up. Was it some kind of interdimensional being that I just got lucky and saw? And then out of the back of its home, this thing really looked like a monster. I believe it would be called a demon by most other people if they saw it because it was so strange looking sometimes i think it was something like a ghost maybe from a different time but the thing is i saw it kick up dust as it ran into the bushes so it was real not a vision there you have it two people within 15 to 20 feet with a car light fixed on this subject for 10 to 20 seconds no drugs alcohol involved no ghost stories or witchcraft talk just omg let's go fishing then oh shit what was that well, there you have it, folks. Tonight's night ending bonus upload. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps this channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives people a chance and a place for them to share their experiences and theories judgment free? Please, everyone, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about. And it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for answers. And God bless.